Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today we will be teaching you anti-diabetic drugs. Now, your syllabus is anti-diabetic drugs. But before we go into details, that what are anti-diabetic drugs and how they work, let me give you uh, an understanding that how diabetes develops or how hyperglycemia develops. So once you take your foods, let's see, this is the stomach, this is a small intestine, this is purely diagrammatic, and then this to the so once you take the food, it contains carbohydrates, it contains proteins, it contains fats, and it also contains vitamins and plus minerals. These are called microelements and these are called macroelements. What important is regarding diabetes mellitus that is carbohydrate. Now recall your biochemistry once you were taught that classification of carbohydrates, monosaccharide, disaccharides, polysaccharides, yes, and oligosaccharides. So your foods contain starch. Starch is a polysaccharide. Now this starch, once you eat, passes through the mastication, the, the works different enzymes there, and now it is converted into monosaccharides monosaccharides these monosaccharides are the absorbable form like glucose glucose is monosaccharide <clears throat> so here is an enzyme that works is alpha glucosidase alpha glucosidase and alpha glucosidase helps in the conversion of polysaccharides, disaccharides into monosaccharides, which are the most absorbable form. Now, the, this glucose is absorbed, passing through the this portal system and reaching the blood. Once reaching the blood, so there is we use a certain terminology and that is blood glucose level. Now in your physiology, in biochemistry, you were taught that what is random blood glucose level, what is passing blood glucose level, what are kidneys threshold for blood glucose level, you must recall that knowledge as well. So, if there is an increase in blood glucose level, so it gives information to the pancreas to secrete insulin. So another organ that comes and works together that is pancreas. And here are islands of Langerhans. Now, what's a high blood glucose level? that enters this pancreas, you see, so it, this is sensed by the cells of the pancreas and it secretes insulin. This insulin, <clears throat> since it is a hormone, it is directly secreted into the blood, so it reaches the blood, and remember here is blood glucose level is increased. So what happens to the, the, the glucose? This glucose is now uptaken into the skeletal muscles, and of course into the liver in shape of glycogen. So here glycogen, here glycogen. So it is stored here. Now if here this uptake is inhibited, this will be associated with the hyperglycemia. Or if there is really the problem in the release of insulin, so Decrease in the level of insulin will also lead to hyperglycemia. So nowadays, 
people consider hyperglycemia as a syndrome. It's the syndrome. Before you take a patient is suffering from a full-fledged pulmonary diabetes mellitus. Now, there are different drugs that works at different level. As I said, alpha glucosidase. If you inhibit this here, so it will inhibit the conversion into the into glucose, which is the most absorbable form. So, least amount of, less, less amount of glucose will be available to reach the blood glucose level. Therefore, you can you can control that. Apart from the lifestyle modification, and that is exercise, walk, uh, uh, changes in the food habits and habitats, and that is called as food fairism. This is another terminology that is called as food fairism, because certain people are just inclined to eat a particular type of food as well, and that is called food fairism. So once you are going to take history, so while taking history, it is important to know about uh, the food fetishism or habits and habitats of the patient as well. Now, uh, because recording is going to be done, I can't tell you about it, but certain characters or certain other leading, they were they 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 famous for eating aloos and this. So, aloos is not the aloos. When we eat, so that's the rich source of carbohydrate. So, that's why, therefore, Therefore, while controlling the blood glucose level, it is important now to, 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 con to have a control, have a look on the habit and habitats, food, food fairism of particular patient as well. Besides his, his her work, and first you have to exhaust all these options, then you have to go to, to the drugs. So, alpha glucosidase inhibitors is the one class. The second is the drugs that secretes insulin. These are called as secretogogs. So the second class is sulfonyl ureas. Sulfonyl ureas. And these sulfonyl ureas are secretogogs that increases the insulin from the beta cells. How that will work, we will come to that in the next step. So sulfonyl ureas like uh, glabeglamide, glimepiride, gliburide, so they are it's You can go and take the support of any textbook and you can just recall the names. So sulfonyl ureas. The other class is uh, bigonides. And bigonides are like metformin, phenformin. That increases the peripheral utilization of glucose. Increases the peripheral utilization of glucose, and therefore, therefore, blood glucose level is lowered. Now, to, while comparing sulfonyl ureas and bigonides, since sulfonyl ureas uh, increases the insulin secretion, they are beta cell cytotropic drugs. So, risk of hypoglycemia is with the is with the is with the is with the possible with the sulfonyl ureas. Here, it is having no risk of hypoglycemia. So, first one is you have to control on the food fetism, habits and habitats, advise exercise, then uh, sulfonyl ureas, then glimepiride, then vaponides, you see, and going to the other aspects of diabetes mellitus, you have to give, in certain cases, insulin from the exogenous source as well. Insulin from the, this is how sulfonyl ureas works and releases the, the endogenous insulin. But in certain cases, once your patient is not, not responding, is not responding to the oral therapy, then you may take the support of this uh, uh, insulin therapy. So you can give different types of insulin from the exogenous sources as well. And sometimes in the old classification of diabetes mellitus, there were insulin dependent diabetes mellitus and insulin non dependent uh, di diabetes mellitus. Now, we will be teaching you that how, what are insulin preparations, how 
uh, that was how you are going to give from uh, different rules of administration, you see. So that will be a different aspects. But important is to compare sulfonylurea and metformin since it increases the peripheral utilization of glucose, so therefore it is free of risk of hypoglycemia. Whereas sulfonylurea is associated with the risk of uh, hypoglycemia. Assessment by MCQ, we ask that which of the following is associated with the risk of hypoglycemia. So first idea should come to your mind that since sulfonylureas are secretogax, they secrete insulin, therefore possible risk, which means risk which is most, more, most, most important with the sulfonylurea. So you have to go and see now the classification of sulfonylurea like levinclamide, glimipiride, glucurides, the lengthy list and they have different half-life as well.